स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू टूडे क्लास इन टूडे लेक्चर विल स्टार्ट डिस्कसिंग द एप्लीकेशन ऑफ क्वांटम मैकेनिक्स इफ यू रिमेंबर इन लास्ट सेवरल क्लासेस we discuss the principles and postulates of quantum mechanics now we have enough information uh, so as to prepare ourselves to deal with some real systems uh, to begin with we would actually look for quantum mechanical solutions for a few simple systems these systems are exactly solvable and the first one that we will be dealing with is this very famous so called particle in a box uh, problem Uh, before we discuss the quantum mechanical quantum mechanical solution of the particle in a box uh, let us discuss about its chemical significance because often what happens is that students get confused with the terminology what is this particle and what kind of box is it uh, let us put the matter uh, straight the, at the outset uh, do not imagine any classical box like the the picture sh shown here or any particle inside it so this classical picture should be removed from your mind i will now try, try to tell you that what chemical systems we have in mind when we call particle in a box we know from atomic structure that an atom composed of a central nucleus and one or many electrons going around it now the electrons are under the influence of the nucleus so the electrons are bound by a box that the nucleus creates so an atom is essentially a part represents particle in a box where the particle is an electron and the box is the nuclear field that the atom produces now similarly when we go beyond an atom to a molecule for example uh, let us uh, let us uh, let us try uh, to draw a few simple molecules for example the most simplest of it, of, of them uh, let us consider water for example in water we see that there are 10 electrons or 8 electrons from oxygen one each from each hydrogen and there are three nuclei the these 10 electrons are restricted To, to the nuclear field that this water molecule produces so the electrons are somewhere here in this region of space but certainly they are not here certainly they are not here far away from the nucleus if you imagine conjugated diene 13 butadiene or its extended version uh, the hexatriene in this case what you see is that there are these pi electrons which which are essentially delocalized over the entire chain of the molecules so these pi electrons are all over this molecule so their electron distribution can be shown to to move around this one dimensional box similarly if you imagine your uh, benzene molecule we know that we have got uh, six pi electrons and these pi electrons are again delocalized over the benzene ring so in this case the particles are restricted with in, in this box in this case the particle or the electrons are restricted in this box and here in in case of benzene they are restricted in this box you can see that from one molecule to another molecule the shape the size the dimension of this box changes but the bottom line is the same that we have some particles by that i mean electrons uh trapped with in the nuclear environment so this is what we mean when you say particle in a box all right now we'll uh we are now uh, after this point we would uh now look at how to solve this system quantum mechanically uh so when we see when we say that we want to solve this problem quantum mechanically we of course have schrodinger equation in mind we already know that everything that we need to know about a system is out there in the wave function and the wave function psi has got all the information in it but this information can be extracted from the system by applying an operator 
So, the operator is Hamiltonian operator which is which corresponds to energy when we apply Hamiltonian operator and this wave function which contains all the information we get the observable corresponding to this operator. So, since we are applying Hamiltonian operator we are going to get the observable energy and this is the Schrodinger equation that we already have said. What is Hamiltonian in here? Hamiltonian has two parts it is an energy operator. So, when I have a particle or an electron uh, in, a, in a molecule. So, I have kinetic energy of that electron and the potential energy of the electron. So, the kinetic energy operator we have already uh, seen that the kinetic energy operator has this kind of form which is minus h bar square by 2 m and the second derivative with respect to all three Cartesian coordinates x, y and z. So, in this case it says that the electron can actually travel in along x direction, y direction, z direction and the, the particle or the electron has a mass of m. If a particle has a mass of m and it is allowed to move in all three directions, this is the kinetic, en kinetic energy operator for that particle. But in today's uh, class, we will restrict our discussion to a simpler system that is instead of looking at the particles movement in all three directions, we will restrict the particle to move only along one direction and that is along x direction. So, that would actually simplify our uh, kinetic energy operator. So, you see the uh, this particular the formulation had both had x, y and z, but in this case since I am restricting my movement to only x direction, the kinetic energy operator has only d square by dx square and you also should notice that I have moved from partial derivative over here to simple derivative normal derivative in this case, because now I have only one dimension I have ignored y and z, because my particle is moving essentially from minus infinity in x direction to plus infinity in x direction and this is my origin. So, this is about the kinetic energy. Now, what about the potential energy? So, I what I see here is that this is the x axis my molecule is somewhere here. So, the electron will be restricted within this field. So, what I have done is now I am putting my molecular environment between 0 x value of 0 to x value of L. What the shaded region shows uh, is, is that here in this case the particle experiences huge amount of potential, whereas within this region the particle experiences no external potential. That means, the particle is free to move within this region. So, in the, in, from this diagram you should imagine that my molecule is kept somewhere between x equals 0 to x equals L. So, that is why the particle is allowed to move within this molecular environment. It is never going to be found far away from the molecular environment or the nuclear influence of the, of the molecule. So, when I define my potential energy uh, like this, I can very well uh, uh, express that in terms of uh, uh, an equation. So, V the potential energy operator is 0 when x is between 0 and L, so within this region and V is infinite elsewhere. So, 0 to minus infinite and L to plus infinite V is infinite or the potential energy is, in, is infinite. Now, we are uh, we have defined now three dif uh, different regions, region 1, region 3 which have ex which experiences V equals infinite and region 2 where V is, is 0. Now, we would solve the quantum mechanical problem in each of these uh, regions. We would begin with uh, regions 1 and 3. So, here uh, we would write down the Schrodinger equation H psi equals E psi where the kinetic energy is given by so this is t psi plus v psi which v to the potential energy is infinite which gives me e psi so this is the schrodinger equation in regions 1 or region 3 because in both cases this is my potential this is my potential energy operator if I want to solve this, I can take this second term to the right hand side. So, it will become E minus infinite which will be minus infinite and then I can simplify this solution by uh, writing down 
I just took this h bar square by 2 m to the other side and in multiply anything with infinite it remains infinite. So, I have this simple uh, differential equation, but I see that in the right hand side I have wave function multiplied by infinite. So, therefore, if I write down the wave function I would have to have this. So, wave function is simply 0 in region 1 and region 3. So, region 1 wave function is 0, region 3 the wave function is 0. Does it make sense? Yes, because we know the wave function itself does not have physical uh, interpretation, but what has physical interpretation is psi star psi, the wave function multiplied by its complex conjugate. When you do that, what is the, the uh, what do you get here? Again, you get 0 and what does that probability density tell? That the, the probability density of finding the or probability of finding the particle in region 1 and region 3 is 0. Does that make sense? Of course, it does because we have modeled our system where within the molecular environment or within the box there is no potential energy, but the moment the particle wants to go out of the box it experiences huge amount of potential energy that it has to climb and it can never climb because we have kept our V as infinite. So, therefore, the particle never escapes and we have probability 0 outside the box. So, this makes sense. Now, uh, we learnt about the region 1 and 2, re sorry region 1 and 3. Now, we would go actually to uh, the next solution that is in region 2. In region 2, again we will start with the same uh, way, the way we started uh, in region 1 and 3. Uh, so, we would write down the uh, Schrodinger equation. But in this case, the V potential energy is 0. So, V equals 0 and this is my Schrodinger equation. The wave function is, is written here. So, this is my V like last time. When I simplify this equation, I have you would be you would be able to identify this equation from your mathematics uh, classes. This is a second order homogeneous differential equation whose solution is, is well known. We are not going to get the solution rather we are going to use the solution that we know from our mathematics knowledge and apply it in our in our course. So, uh, for such a such an equation the the solution the general solution is an exponential function we call it e to the power alpha x. So, where x is my uh, x, uh, x axis the dimension here alpha is something that I do not know I will have to find out this alpha for, for, for the given problem. When I apply this e to the power alpha x in this equation in this equation you see the first term it requires me to differentiate this wave function psi twice with respect to x. I know when I differentiate e to the power alpha x with respect to x, I get alpha into e to the power alpha x. So, if I do this differentiation twice, I would get alpha square e to the power alpha x plus the second term is simply a multiplication of the wave function. So, I have 2 m e h bar square e to the power alpha x which is 0. Now, in each of the term in the left hand side we have e to the power alpha x. Since this is actually the wave function we can assume that this is not going to be 0 and find the non trivial solution from this equation as alpha square equals minus 2 m e h bar h bar square or in other words alpha would become. So, square root of minus 1 will give me an imaginary root the square root of these quantities would give me a plus minus So, I have I have a term like this. So, since this is rather a big term. So, I am just giving it a short name i beta. I am calling this square root of 2 m e divided by h bar as, as uh, beta. Uh, this is just for uh, simplification in the notation. So, now what I have is that I wanted a solution for, for alpha, but what I have got now there are two possible values of alpha one is i beta another is minus i beta. So, I write down so psi is e to the power i beta x or e to the power minus i beta x. I 
one of these two solutions uh, are uh, each of these solutions is, is uh, accepted. So, therefore, I do not know what what more to do. So, therefore, I will accept both the solutions, but I would what I would do is that I would take a linear combination of them by giving a coefficient c 1 to this c 2 to this. What do I do? Uh, what do I gain by this? I am telling that each of the solution is acceptable. So, therefore, I am giving some coefficient c 1 and c 2 and I would find out the coefficient c 1 and c 2 they rep essential, essentially represent what is the contribution of e to the power i beta x or what is the contribution of e to the power minus i beta x to the final wave function. This e c 1 and c 2 have to be determined. So, I would just uh, do a uh, few simple uh, uh, steps of algebra. I will express this exponential function in, in terms of cosine and sine function. So, I have cosine of uh, beta x plus i sine of beta x plus c 2, I have cosine of beta x minus i sine beta x. I can take the real quantities and the imaginary quantities separately. So, I have c 1 plus c 2 cosine beta x plus i c 1 minus c 2 sin beta x. I have got two new constants c 1 plus 2 c 1 minus 2. Uh, so, I will rewrite this as a cos beta x plus b sin beta x. Now, I have got a, a formula for my a wave function a cos beta x b sin beta x, where beta has been defined as, as uh, square root of 2 a me divided by h bar and a and b are the constants of the coefficients that I still do not know and I would be spending time in learning about this. So, this is the wave function uh, the form, form, form of the wave function that I am getting from uh, this exercise. We will continue our uh, ex uh, exercise further, but before that let us see what we have got. We have region 1 where the wave function is 0, region 2 where the wave function is 0 and region sorry uh, region 1 and region 3 of the wave function is 0 and in region 2 we have this, this wave function. Now, we already know that for a quantum mechanical solution, the acceptable wave function must be continuous throughout this dimension from minus infinity to plus infinity the wave function must be continuous. So, this gives, some, gives us some additional boundary conditions that we would deal with. Okay. So, uh, we have now the wave function for the region 2 as a cosine beta, beta x plus b sin uh, beta x. Now, we have to see that the wave function is continuous in throughout the region. So, at x equals 0, the wave function must be wave function at region 1 and region 2 should be same. So, at x equals 0, psi 1 should be equal to psi 2, but we know psi 1 is 0 throughout. So, this is 0 and psi 2 for x equals 0, this equation is simply beta beta x plus b sin beta x. So, I know that when x is 0 sin function is 0, when x is 0 cosine function is 1. So, therefore, the right hand side is simply a, but I see for boundary condition to make the wave function continuous at x equals 0, I must have a as 0. So, the solution that I got in the region 2 where which has a and b at the two coefficients for cosine function and sine function, I see that the boundary condition requires me that the coefficient for the cosine function must vanish. So, therefore, the wave function that I am left with is simply b sin beta x. Now, at I look at now x equals l at this region, what happens to this region? At this region psi 3 and psi 2 are operative. So, at x equals l psi 2 should be equal to psi 3, but we know psi 3 is 0 throughout. So, therefore, b sin beta l 
which is this here I, I used x as l b sin beta l is 0. So, we know when the sin function becomes 0. So, the solution of that is that beta l should be n pi where n is 0 or 1, 2 and, and so on. So, in this case we I have already some idea about beta that I see beta is n pi by l and therefore, the wave function that I am looking for is b sin n pi x by l. So, I got a form of the wave function as this. So, you can see this wave function psi 2 uh, wave function in the region 2 has has a sign, uh, the form functional form of a sine function which depends on the l the length of, of the box pi a constant x the variable the uh, dimension of the problem and n is an integer which goes from 0 1 to uh, so on so forth. So, therefore, the wave functions show that they are quantized not every sine function is a, is a wave function rather some specific discrete sine, sine functions are the wave function or are the eigen functions of this system. What about the energy? Uh, we have we will start with this equation beta l equals n pi, but we already know beta is 2 m e by h bar equals n pi by l. When I solve this for e, I would get this e equals n square h square by 8 m l square. Again, let us look at the energy expression. Energy depends on the length of the box that makes sense. Energy depends on the mass of the particle. Energy depends on the h which is actually a universal constant the Planck's constant, but energy also depends on another variable n which can go from 0, 1, 2, 3 so on so forth. So, therefore, since I have so many energy levels to identify them I am calling e this giving an index to this energy I am calling this E n because E will depend on n. Now, there is one more point to look at about the possible values of n equals 0, 1, 2. When we have n equals 0, when you look at this wave function b sin n pi x by l. So, when n is 0, this quantity becomes 0, does not matter what value of x you put here, the wave function is always 0. We already knew that wave function has to become 0 at re in region 1 and region 3. Now, we say that if n is 0, then the wave function is also 0 throughout the region between x, uh, x between 0 and l. So, that means, if n is 0, the wave function is 0 all along. If wave function is 0, its probability is density is 0 throughout. So, that means, there is no particle and that is a trivial solution and that solution is, is not acceptable. And what we say is that this n equals 0 condition we are excluding. So, therefore, allowed values of n are n equals 1, 2, 3 and so on so forth. Now, we have got the form, form, functional form of energy, we have got the form of uh, the, the wave function. Only one thing that is unknown is what is this b, the constant b that we do not know and we can find that when there is a wave function uh, which has only one unknown, we have to remember that the wave function has to be normalized. When we normalize this wave function, this coefficient can be determined. So, this is what we are going to do next. So, now we are going to normalize this wave function. When we say normal, we, we want to normalize the wave function we have essentially we say that psi star psi d x between minus x goes from minus infinity to plus infinity should become 1. So, this is the probability density at any point psi star psi, psi star psi d x is the probability within a interval of d x and when we integrate from minus infinity to plus infinity. So, that means, we are calculating the probability in the entire range and that has to become 0. So, we can break it down to minus infinity to uh, 0, the second term 0 to l 
the third term as L 2 plus infinite should be 1, but we know between L 2 infinite infinite the wave function is 0, between minus infinite to 0 the wave function is 0, only this region is this finite. So, we will look at this, but we already know psi star psi is b. So, psi star is psi star psi will have a b square term. So, 0 l and I have a sin square n pi x divided by l d x and we have to evaluate this integral. You we can express it in terms of a, a 1 minus cosine divided by 2 that the integration limit is 0 to L. So, here I see that the first term will have 1 by 2 d x. So, which will give me L by 2 minus the second term will have a integration of cosine function which will give me a sine function. and this is between 0 to L. When I look at this second term, when x is equal to L, the function is sin 2 n pi, so which is 0. When x is 0, then this function is sin 0. So, therefore, the second term, when I evaluate the two limits, it will give me 0, this vanishes. So, therefore, I am left with only b square into L by 2, which is equal to 1, because, because this is what we wanted to do. Now, when I use the value of b, uh, we so I solve this, I get the value of b is this. So, therefore, the normalization constant what I get is 2 by L and I can write down the wave function now. And you see that uh, this psi depends on n. So, I am writing down this psi n. Uh, if few things that you should, uh, I am just for uh, for the sake of completeness, I am writing down the energy expression, which you will see again. What we see is that the wave function has n dependence, the energy has n dependence, so both wave functions and uh, both wave function and the energies are quantized uh, and that they have explicit dependence on n. Another thing to remember is that the normalization constant that we determine, which is 2 by L it does not have any n dependence. So, it does not matter which eigenfunction we are talking about, the normalization function remains uh, the same. So, uh, to summarize in today's uh, lecture, we started with uh, defining what is particle in a box problem is and then we try to do quantum mechanical, quantum mechanical solution for this. We formulated the Hamiltonian, the kinetic energy operator, the potential energy operator. We solved the system in three regions. We saw that region 1 and region 3, where the particle experiences infinite potential, the wave function vanishes and the wave function remains finite only within the box 0 to L. In today's lecture, we will continue our discussion. Thank you for your attention.